In little houses, people lie sleeping and dreaming about daytime things, while outside, in the fields and by the rivers and deep in the trees, there is only night and nighttime things. I chose this one because I think that Cynthia Ryland is being very descriptive. She's introducing what she's writing about here and talking about how in the country and it's nighttime and while everything is quiet and dark, she's emphasizing all of those things as she's introducing her story. She then goes on to say, there are owls, great owls with marble eyes who swoop among the trees and who are not afraid of night in the country, night birds. So I thought this was a good example in her writing and how she's using descriptive when she describes the owl's eyes as marble eyes, meaning they're dark and round and they look like marbles, as well as just telling you information that these are night birds and you will hear them and see them at nighttime in the country. Another page that I thought she was being compelling was this page and it reads, there are frogs, night frogs who sing songs for you every night. Greek, 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 night songs. So here she's telling you about the frogs that, will, that you could hear from the pond or outside in the grassy areas. And I thought that her using the sounds that the frogs make was being really descriptive and compelling in her story. Another part in this story that since Cynthia Ryland writes um, using an onomatopoeia like before she used the sound the frog makes here she's using the sound that an apple makes and she says and if you lie very still you may hear an apple fall from the tree in the backyard listen and she uses that colon and then goes to the next page pump and that's the sound of the apple falling from the tree and the last couple pages that I want to talk to you about that Cynthia writes are and all around you on a night in the country are the groans and thumps and squeaks that houses make when they are trying, like you, to sleep. Outside, then they will spend a day in the country listening to you. So both of these pages were at, towards the end of the book and discussing all of the sounds and things that you might hear at night while you are trying to sleep. But then all of these things that were happening at night are kind of going away and then the new day begins and they get to listen to you as you go begin your day. So hopefully you were able to think about and discuss about different ways that Cynthia Ryland was compelling in her writing and how you can make your writing more creative and um, interesting in ways like she did. And after listening to a couple of the examples that I shared about her story and the ways they were, interesting. Um, I just wanted to share with you how I might try them in my own writing. So when she was talking about nighttime and all the sounds she heard um, while being in the country, I immediately thought of where I live and at nighttime I typically hear the cars go by on the highway um, or on the road next to me. I have a train track right by my place so I might write something about how I can hear the train as it goes by on the tracks and it I could make the sounds of the chugga lugga chugga lugga or I could say the loud whistle rings in my ears as the train goes by or I can see the red lights flashing um, and the bells ringing uh, where the cars are supposed to stop on the road for the train as it goes by. So different ways that I could share um, with my readers uh, how they could feel about and understand what it's like for me when at nighttime when I'm trying to sleep. Um, another thing that I thought of as a writer I could try would be, um, she's talking about nighttime, I could also write about daytime and how at school in the morning I can hear the soft chitter chatter of the kids walking down the hallway as they go to hang up their bags to get ready for their day at school. So just different ways um, that I could take her descriptive writing and make my writing more descriptive and kind of comparing that and thinking about those ways that I can describe the people and the places and the events that I want to write about in my story so that readers um, can enjoy my writing. So those are just a few of the big takeaways that I got from her story today and I hope you got something to take away from it too and maybe even try something in your own writing and we will continue this author study 
um, with Cynthia Rylance to continue to make our writing even better and better.